prayer works how i made a huge profit and got my cat back it's a very interesting story and i trust that it'll bless your heart i'm going to open in prayer father we come to you in the mighty name of jesus lord you helped me in my time of trouble and the purpose of my teaching today is to show the people that are watching that you can help them too and nothing is impossible for you my god and we commit this time to you we pray lord that everybody that hears this message the fruit the seeds will be sown and there'll be good fruit in their lives my god in jesus name and we bind the devil from interfering in any way shape or form in the mighty name of jesus amen so prayer works ladies you know um god is amazing he will never let us down he will never throw us away he'll never abandon us but we need to trust him we need to trust him so let's get on with it so in this teaching you're going to discover what to do when a situation you are in feels like a scrambled egg that you need to scramble now you know that if you put eggs in a bowl and scramble those eggs you can never get those eggs to its original form but god can because he can do anything you'll also learn how to watch your heart attitude towards god praying in tongues is a major key to unscrambling any situation and you'll find out the importance of knowing and obeying the voice of god so let's think about this and i want you to like really think like just think what would you do if a huge blessing turns sour and becomes a misery? Will you get angry with God? Will you get angry with yourself? Will you get into a state of depression? How will you behave? What if, you, what if it felt like you were all alone in this big mess? Do you know that God will help you? How will you respond? Just think about it. Because when you think about it, you will see that the way we behave determines the outcome. So as I share my story, make notes of the strategies that God showed me. Um, and um, he revealed stuff that I needed to do. And you can do the same and you can do better. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He just wants us to trust him. You would do anything for your children when your children trust you. God is the same. He will do anything for us. He just wants us to trust him. He can turn an impossible situation around for his glory. And you will also discover how to overcome your storm. Trust God. You know, whenever I go through a hard time, I say, this too shall pass. So when you're in a trouble, this too shall pass. So let's get on with it. So in 2013, the pressure on me was great. From my family and people at work to buy my own property, because if you watched how I prayed myself out of misery, you will know that I was driving brand new cars and BMWs, especially two of them. And they were all like, but you're renting and you're driving a BMW, which is true. It shouldn't have happened, but it's hard to get a bond when you're a single female. So I just never really paid attention. So the pressure was on me to do this. And I just finished three years of Bible school in 2012. And in 2013, I had a lot of free time now. And I started looking for a property. So I um, had this desire to buy a property. And I prayed. I said, Lord, it must have three bedrooms because I really want to study, you know, fancy study. And um, yeah. So I prayed for favor and I find, found one for 609,000 rand. It was a three bedroom, two bathrooms with a balcony and two parkings. Very cheap for that complex and that area. So I quickly got a hold of the agent and I put in the offer to purchase. And guess what? I received a 100% bond very quickly. Even the agent was surprised the bank approved it so quickly. And within a month, everything went through and I could move in. So guess what? I moved in. So I moved in in September 2013 with my mom and my cat. I was not married at the time. 
um, I was a single young lady worshiping the Lord. And <laughs> you know, when you're single, you must have a cat. Well, thank God I didn't end up to be the cat lady with 14 cats. Praise God for that. I did get married eventually. So when I moved in, oh my goodness, it was lovely for a month, putting everything, buying new stuff, putting the curtains, getting the study ready that I always wanted. And then my heart broke because I got a nasty surprise when I found out after moving in, bond approved, money in the bank, well, in the bank, well, bond money already transferred, all of that wonderful stuff. And then I didn't know that this complex had a super strict cat, no pet policy. And my next door neighbor, <laughs> I thought she was my friend because we worked together. She was on the body corporate and she saw my cat one Saturday morning and she just looked at him like. And then Monday morning, I get this nasty letter. Oh, it was actually the Thursday. I got this nasty letter that says, you have three weeks to remove your cat. And um, if you don't remove him in three weeks, we will forcefully remove him. So my heart just sank. I mean, you got this beautiful property. God gave you this 100% bond. Now you can't keep your cat. And I loved this little cat. And I was so excited about this place, but my heart broke. And you know what? I needed to go to Durban that week, that weekend for my cousin's engagement. And I said, since I'm going to Durban, let me just take the cat with. My brother can look after the cat. So I took the cat to Durban in, September, in October. And I was so hurt. And when I came back to Johannesburg, I was like, I can't do this. This is too painful. You know, if the cat died, it would have been better because then he's dead and you cry and you get over it. But this cat is alive and he's all alone. Well, in my mind, he's all alone in Durban. And what am I going to do now? Suddenly, the, the big blessing was no longer exciting. It was just this heartache and this pain and this like, what do I do? And you know, it was just a terrible time for me. I felt so hurt and disillusioned. My soul felt like it was in a pit. I was in a state of depression. I was crying. I was like, oh, Jesus, what happened? I don't know what to do. You know, I got this cat from six weeks old. He was a tiny little baby. And um, I kept saying, Father, you know, I keep thinking about his little face and his cuteness and the way he follows me around the house and I was just crying and being miserable and I was like, I don't know what to do. It broke my heart to leave him in Durban. So when I came back to Johannesburg, I was very disillusioned. I no longer liked the property. I didn't use the study. It just lied there. So I got this big miracle, this, this beautiful home at a very cheap price. And then I didn't even know that they're not going to allow my cat. They sent nasty emails to me, get rid of the cat. We will forcefully remove the cat. And, and this beautiful blessing became a pain in my heart. It was hurtful. It was sad. It was de depressing. It was like, I don't know what to do. So guess what? I ran to the only one I know who can help me, and that's God. So I went prostrate before the Lord. This is, a, this is what prostrate looks like. You're on your face before the Lord with your face on the floor, your tummy on the floor, your hands in front of you, and you just cry out to God and you say, what do I do in this situation? Must I rent the place? Must I sell the place? I just bought it. It's not even three months old. Who's going to buy it? That property I found out later was on the market for two years. Nobody bought it. And then they reduced the price to 609000 and I got it because I wanted it and I asked God for it and they gave it to me. But look now, what do I do? And you know, some people might say, oh, but he's just a cat. Why, why would you just worry about a cat? He's just a cat. Just give him away to the SPCA. No, my heart was attached to this creature. And I was alone. I was a single girl. As I said, you know, single woman love cats. Well, most of them anyway. So I was like, what do I do, Lord? You know, do I, do I sell it? Do I rent it out? What do I do? And I felt so alone and lost and scared and I was going through all of this and people were like oh but it's just a cat and I was like no but it's my cat and so it was a very sad time in my life and I spent a lot of time praying in tongues 
praying in tongues that God unscramble this egg. You know, it says in Romans 8, 26 and 27, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. I was weak, I was depressed, I was sad, I didn't know what to do, nobody could give me advice. What do they tell you? You know, if you buy a property, first of all, it'll lie in a state of for sale for a long time before you get a buyer. Then when you get a buyer, that person must get approved. Then it takes at least three months for the bond to be approved, the money to be transferred, all of those wonderful things to happen. So buying a property and selling a property is a long process. And I'm like, Lord, is this cat going to stay in Durban the rest of his life? And I mean, my brother, he's doing me a favor. It's not his duty to look after this cat. And I'm like, am I going to give him away? What, what must I do? And there was no answer. But the Bible says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. But look at this last part of this verse. It says, the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So it's like, Lord, I can't fix this thing, but you can. So I prayed and prayed and prayed in tongues. And then I kept confessing. This is a testimony under construction because, you know, if you go to church every week, even in your sad state, God will speak to you through the person there. And they were preaching that this is a testimony under construction. When something goes wrong, this is a testimony under construction. I'll pray myself out of this thing. My God loves me enough to change the situation around. My God loves me enough that he will fix this thing. You gotta have faith in God. You gotta believe that he's your loving father. And thank God at that season in my life, my faith was quite high because I used to pray a lot. I just finished three years of Bible school. I used to read a lot, worship a lot. And I kept confessing, this is a testimony under construction. God will turn this around. It will be well. You know, what you say in a crisis will determine the outcome of that crisis. When something hits you with a shock, when something hits you with a, with a gut-wrenching blow where you feel like you lost your air, you can't breathe. What do you do? What do you say? What words come out of your mouth? Are you going to say, God will fix us. God will turn us around. God will help us in this time of need. Or do you give up and die? My sister out there, don't give up and die. God loves you. He can do the impossible. He can do the impossible. So what you say in a crisis will determine the outcome of that crisis. When we are in a crisis, we must watch what we say. Watch your heart attitude towards God. You know, unfortunately, God as wonderful as he is, we tend to blame him like, oh God, why did you allow this to happen? God, if you just didn't give me the bond, my cat will still be with me and I'd still be renting. <laughs> God, if you didn't give me that house that I really desired, I wouldn't be in this pain and this spit. Don't we blame God? But it's our own decision, right? He blesses us. He will give us the desires of our heart. Watch that your heart does not get bitter. I could have gotten very bitter about this thing. You know, it was 100% born. It was a beautiful property. It was below market value. It was a blessing, but it turned ugly. But you know what? I learned something from this. What went wrong? What went wrong? It was God's will that I owned the property. It was God's will to give it to me at market, below market value. It was God's will that I get the 100% bond, yes. First of all, it shouldn't have been a bond, it should have been cash, but that's my faith for now. But back then, I had the faith for the bond. So sometimes God will meet you at your level of your faith. So now, eight years later, I have faith for the cash property. And he will do that for us because we're trusting him for a bigger property. But at that time, I only had faith for a 100% bond and he gave it to me, he's merciful. He will always meet you at your level of faith. You know, the Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. So if you have small faith, you'll receive a small miracle. If you have big faith, you'll receive a big miracle. It depends on your faith. But what did I learn in that situation? I learned that just because something looks good and it will satisfy a current need, there's no reason to rush. You know, we as women, we get so intimidated by people. We get like, oh, if I don't obey my brother, my uncle, my husband, my father, my whoever, 
you know, like I'll get rejected and I'll be like, it will be a problem. But you know what? You need to trust God, obey God first. I should have found out that, I should have found out, I should have done some research and some homework. Is this a pet friendly complex? And not just assume. So those three complexes were built by the same developer and I rented in the one and the one opposite that one I bought. So the one I rented in there didn't mind I had a cat because I lived on the second floor and the cat never went outside He's an indoor cat. But this new complex that I bought, I just assumed it'll be the same thing. So, I mean, it's a big thing to buy a house and, and sign the papers and commit yourself to 20 years to pay back this money. And I didn't think about all that because I was so inferior and insecure inside that I just rushed and I did it. And, and those days I was very insecure and afraid, afraid of people, afraid of things, afraid of life. God fixed that in my heart and he can fix it in yours too. So I should have done homework and found out, is this thing pet friendly? So my self image and inner strength and lack of confidence made me afraid to do the things I needed to do. I felt like if I didn't take that minute, I won't get another one. And the world will be over like, oh, you missed out and now there's no other opportunity. And don't we think like that sometimes? Like, you know, you gotta rush in this pressure, pressure, pressure. I also learned that I needed to stay calm and do my homework. And you must think like this too. So from October, to December, the cat stayed in Durban. And during that time, I prayed in tongues for God to fix the situation. September, I moved into this unit. October, I got told to get rid of the cat. October, I took the cat to Durban. My brother looked after him. In November, I had the courage because I was so petrified. Like, if you know, if I advertise this house for sale, like, I don't know, the property um, uh, things, are, the property police are gonna come and lock me up in jail and put me in jail. <laughs> You know, sometimes I think women, women are so, you know, we females, shame, God must help us. But I was so afraid, afraid of the property police. I don't know where they live, somewhere in space. I was so afraid to advertise it. I was so afraid, what are people going to say? I'm selling my house or just watch it. Is anyone going to buy it? I was so full of fear, ladies. I was so full of fear. So here's a little thing just showing you that I actually did have, I did list it um, for sale. And, you know, the thing is, God still didn't tell me what to do. I just kept praying in tongues and saying, my loving father. And at that time, well, five years before that, I just fixed the father fracture in my heart where I could now trust God, the father, and not just pray to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I will be doing a teaching on the father fracture and how God fixed that. Because some of us, we look at Jesus and the Holy Spirit and we're comfortable with them. But when we think about a loving father, we can't because subconsciously we block ourselves because our earthly father never did anything for us. And I was that girl, but God fixed that and God healed that. So I just kept praying in tongues and saying, my loving father, you will not let me down. So I started advertising the place to sell, to do a private sale. In December, in December, take note of the date, December, I bought a for sale sign because I said, I'm going to do a private sale. And I just left it in my boot. I was too afraid to go and put it up. And I just felt miserable all the time, pity parties and crying and praying and dying and lying in bed on weekends and goodness. And in December, I spent three weeks in Durban with the cat because um, I was working for a mining company. So they shut down during December. And God still didn't tell me what to do. I was like, just tell me what to do. And he didn't. So I just kept praying in tongues. And I kept telling God, you are my loving father. You will not let me down. And um, Ladies, January, I started inquiring about letting out the place. I, um, uh, you'll see here, there's an email. You can see it's 2014. This whole journey started in 2013. And um, so I started asking agents to come and let the place out to rent. And then, uh oh, around January, February, my brother started saying, you know, I have problems with the cats. First of all, his girlfriend at the time mistakenly locked the cat up in her car. She didn't know for the whole night he was in there. She could have driven off with him, opened the car and he could have ran away. And I was like, oh, Jesus. Then <laughs> there was another incident. Maybe I must have made public. And then he started getting too brave because he's an indoor cat. So he never knows the outside. So he just started staying outside and that soft, fluffy, gorgeous mink kind of fur that he had was just becoming this coarse, 
he's just becoming like a stray cat. I mean, he was getting food and stuff, but oh, I was so devastated. I said, I gave my brother petrol money to bring the cat to Joburg. And he did with his friend. They drove to Johannesburg. They brought the cat back. And I put the cat in the cattery, like paying daily 70 rand a day for them to look after my cat. This is the trauma that I was experiencing. And I know those who don't like cats and don't like pets, you are thinking to yourself, what is wrong with this woman? But this was my story and my pain and my experience. So anyway, we brought him back to Joburg and we put him in a cattery. I visited him, visited him every week. And sometimes during the day from work, I used to sneak out at lunchtime and I used to go and visit this little creature. He wasn't happy with me. He used to just ignore me and sit underneath the whatever he was doing and just basically give me those dirty, if looks could kill, look. Because he didn't like being in a cattery. This continued for a month. And then a miracle happens. Finally, you get to hear what happened. Yay. Somebody say, yes, finally. OK. The for sale sign stayed in my boot for a long time. I was too intimidated and afraid to go outside, take the hammer, knock those um, steel rods into the ground, and put the sign up. I don't know why, but I just had this like paralyzing fear, like I can't do it, I mustn't do it. It's, it's, it's our own insecurities that do this to us. God can heal that. Now I'm like so brave and strong. But listen to this. One Sunday morning in March 2014, I woke up sad as usual, had a pretty party. And then I still prayed and worshiped God. I said, Father, I, whatever's happening, I just trust you. I trust you. And I thanked him. In your desperation and in your sorrow and in your trial and whatever you're going through raise your hands and deliberately force yourself to praise your father say father i'm suffering i'm going through this mess but i praise you anyway girlfriend if you do that the angels come and help you good things happen but if you just say oh god doesn't love me he's not gonna fix this he won't fix it because you spoke it be careful what you say when your heart is broken. So I suddenly, that Sunday morning, <clears throat> we used to go to church on Saturday night. In our church, you can go, well, those days before COVID, you could go Saturday because they preach the same thing on Sunday. So I was at home Sunday morning, did my prayer, did my pretty party, had my tea and biscuits. And then I had this like urge, go and put the for sale sign up. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. And then I had the prompting again, go and put this for sale sign up in my boots, right? I'm like, no, I don't want to. And I didn't think, I didn't obey thinking it was my mind. And I also needed to wash my hair. So I'm like, I'll go after I wash my hair. Now my hair is naturally curly. You've got to wash it with stuff to keep it straight. And then you got to dry it and then you got to iron it section by section to make it straight. So it's a long one, one hour, one and a half hour process. So I ignored this prompting for an hour. And then while drying my hair, it was like, go and put the sign now. <clears throat> I'm like, God, is that you? For the last hour, I've been feeling like, go put the sign up. And now it's like, go put the sign up now. I'm like, okay. So half my hair was like in a grip. The other half was straight at the back. And I went like that. <sighs> Got to obey God, right? Must be God. I mean, <sighs> I don't know what's going on here. But the prompting is like, go, 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 go. Go now, go now, go now, go now. But you got to discern if it's God's voice or your own flesh. Now, I know how to recognize that because I've trained myself and God has taught me. So your journey will be different. But for me, it was prompting to go and put that sign up now. So guess what I did? I went. <laughs> half my hair was straight. Half was not dried yet. Right. I took out the for sale sign from the boot of the car and then a miracle that was only orchestrated by God started. I parked the car, I opened the boot, I took out the sign and I started putting the, the, the steel rods to put the sign up with the cable ties. And uh, there was an agent sitting there 
and she was waiting and she saw me and I saw her car and I'm like, yo, if this lady comes and asks me to sell my property, I'm going to tell her, please get lost. Please leave me alone. I'm in a depressed state. I'm in a, I really don't have the energy for you or your agent's nonsense. And I don't want to share my profit and please just leave me alone. Because all these thoughts are going through my mind now while putting up the for sale sign. And this lady's looking at me and I'm looking at her and the thoughts in my head are like, if you come to talk to me, I'm going to chase you away, lady. And I'm a polite person. I don't chase people away. I'm very nice to, be, to people. But I was so fed up and so hurt and so distraught about this whole thing that if she came to talk to me, I was like ready for a fight. So guess what she did? <laughs> she got out of the car and she walked towards me and I was getting ready to like really rip this lady's head off. And she's like, um, you're selling your house. I'm like, duh, it's a for sale sign. And she's like, how much do you want for it? I'm like, 700,000. Um, 700, 700, she's like, I have a buyer that I'm waiting for. So she was sitting in the car for an hour waiting for this buyer to come. She said she had another unit in that same complex for sale. And can she bring that buyer to look at my unit? And if he likes it, can she sell it to him? So I'm like, oh, Jesus. And she's like, okay, in, in about half an hour, I can bring him. So I'm thinking, okay, in half an hour, I can quickly tidy up the place, blah, 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 blah. So then so like the Holy Spirit said to me, just let her do it. So then I said, okay, bring him or her or it or whatever. And then um, She's like, well, my commission is going to be 40,000. So I'm going to tell him it's for sale for 740. So I'm like, okay, I wanted 700. So you can, if you sell it for 740, the 40,000 is yours. And guess what happened? <laughs> this guy comes to the unit, to my unit. And I'm like, okay, I can't wait another three months for his bond to get approved. But anyway, okay, maybe renting is a better idea. I don't know what to do. So he is from Algeria right and he looks at the ceilings and is like oh yes but he's speaking portuguese and he comes with a translator so i'm like jesus what is going on here anyway he looks at the ceilings and he's talking in portuguese or whatever language and and then <laughs> god is amazing at 12 o'clock that day she sends me a whatsapp say, oh well those days it wasn't whatsapp it was bbm or i don't know whatever but anyway she sent me a message saying He's a cash buyer and he wants to buy the property for 740,000. Cash buyer, girls, cash buyer. Who buys properties for cash nowadays? Cash buyer. She said he signed the offer to purchase for 740,000 Rand that day. She sent me the thing for me to sign and accept the offer. He transferred half the money cash that evening at six o'clock. Jesus, who does this? You see God the Father, how wonderful he is. So that property got sold instantly. And the next, well, half, he was transferring American dollars. So it takes time. So the other half of the money got transferred, I think, on the Tuesday. And that house was sold, cash. She put it in a trash. She did everything. I wouldn't have known what to do if I sold that thing private sale. I mean, what do we know about trusts and God is good. He sent me somebody that knew what to do. So everything happened super fast. Property got sold for 740,000. I bought it for 609,000. And guess what? In March, I got the cat back. <laughs> there he is, this big fat black cat. That's so cute and fuzzy and full of cuteness. So ladies, it was a cash buyer. There was no waiting three months. There was no waiting for the bond to be approved. There was no waiting three months for transfer duties. It got done quickly. As soon as that money hit f &B, paid off the, it was Villa Celeste that I bought that didn't want cats. f &B paid them. Well, the bond was paid with that guy's money. And I found a pet friendly complex brand new from the developer no transfer costs and that's where i lived with my cats and this was my biggest testimony yet because it was just a supernatural thing 
God said, go outside now, because he knew the buyer was coming. He knew the agent with the right buyer was coming. If I disobeyed him, if I said, no, I'm not going, I would not have got that sale. In the middle of drying my hair, he said, go now. Now, he couldn't tell me there's an agent outside, go. He said, go put the for sale sign out, because that was my frame of reference for me to obey to reap the reward. So we need to know how to hear God's voice and act and obey immediately. And God was so merciful. <laughs> Think about this, right? I was like, Jesus, you are so merciful because you told me an hour and a half ago, go outside and put the sign up. And I delayed and delayed and delayed. And this agent said she was sitting and waiting for him for like an hour. How wonderful is our God? You tell me God doesn't exist. He does exist. He gave me that cash buyer. He said, go outside now. And I made the profit, paid off all my debt and got this new complex. So praying in tongues will unscramble the egg. Trust God. He loves you. Some scriptures, Isaiah 50 verse 7. Therefore, for the Lord God helps me. Say it, confess it. The Lord God helps me. I'm going through a financial problem. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I'm not disgraced. It would have been a disgrace if I had to give the cat away. Or I don't know. You know, it, it felt like a disgrace. But the, Lord, the word of God says, the Lord helps me. And therefore, I am not disgraced. Believe God. Believe his word. It's true. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. Meaning, I am firmly focused. I am pushing ahead for God. And I know I will not be ashamed. Psalm 54.4. Behold, God is my helper. Praise you, Father. You are my helper. The Lord is the sustainer of my soul. My soul was depressed and sad and, oh, goodness. <laughs> For six months, say, October, November, December, January, February, March. I got my cat back in March. Who buys and sells a house in six months? God can. Psalms 50 verse 15, and call on me in a day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. And that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm honoring my father for what he did. Because when I was in trouble, I called on my father <clears throat> and he delivered me. And now I must honor him. And I'm honoring before you all that are watching today. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is those who trust in the Lord will never be disappointed. But you got to trust him. It's Romans 10, 11. Whoever believes in him, adheres to, trusts him, and relies on him will not be disappointed. It is written, and this scripture is only one of like three, that says, those who trust in the Lord are never disappointed. So let's pray. Father, I bring everybody that's watching today. Father, if they don't know you, I pray that they will accept you as their Lord and Savior. If you don't know Jesus, if you have not made him the Lord of your life, I'd like you to say this prayer. Say, Father God, I want to be your child. I want to trust you. I want you. I want to serve you. Forgive me for my sins. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to be your child. In Jesus' name. So, Father God, I just pray that whoever, Lord, is watching here today, that faith will rise in their hearts, that they will realize that you love them, that you want the best for them, that you can turn any situation around, even if it looks impossible. Give us the grace. Give us the strength. Give us the courage to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.